and we're going to finish the fifth chapter of Mary Poppins. We've heard the story of the red cow, who was good friends with Mary Poppins' mother, who got a star on her horn and made it so she couldn't stop dancing. So she went to see the king, who suggested that she try and jump over the moon. We are going to hear about that attempt now. The red cow, drawing in her breath, gave one huge, tremendous jump, and the earth fell away beneath her. She could see the figures of the king and the courtiers growing smaller and smaller until they disappeared below. She herself shot upwards through the sky, with the stars spinning around her like great golden plates, and presently, in blinding light, she felt the cold rays of the moon upon her. She shut her eyes and went over it, and as the dazzling gleam passed behind her, and she bent her head toward the earth again, she felt the star slip down her horn. With a great rush it fell off, and went rolling down the sky, and it seemed to her that as it disappeared into the darkness, great chords of music came from it and echoed through the air. In another minute the red cow had landed on the earth again. To her great surprise, she found that she was not in the king's garden, but in her own dandelion field. And she had stopped dancing. Her feet were as steady as though they were made of stone, and she walked as sedately as any other respectable cow. Quietly and serenely she moved across the field, beheading her golden soldiers as she went to greet the red calf. "'I'm so glad you're back,' said the red calf. "'It's been so lonely.' The red cow kissed it and fell to munching the meadow. It was her first good meal for a week, and by the time her hunger was satisfied, she'd eaten up several regiments. After that, she felt better, and soon began to live her life just exactly as she had lived it before. At first, she enjoyed her quiet, regular habits very much, and was glad to be able to eat her breakfast without dancing, and to lie down in the grass and sleep at night instead of curtsying to the moon until the morning. But after a little she began to feel uncomfortable and dissatisfied. Her dandelion field and her red calf were all very well, but she wanted something else, and she couldn't think what it was. At last she realized that she was missing her star. She had grown so used to dancing and to the happy feeling the star had given her that she wanted to do a sailor's hornpipe and to have the star on her horn again. She fretted, she lost her appetite, her temper was atrocious and she frequently burst into tears for no reason at all. Eventually she went to my mother and told her the whole story and asked her advice. "'Good gracious, my dear,' my mother said to her, "'you don't suppose that only one star ever fell out of the sky? Billions fall every night, I'm told, but they fall in different places, of course. You can't expect two stars to drop in the same field in one lifetime.' "'Then you think if I moved about a bit?' The red cow began, a happy, eager look coming into her eyes. "'If it were me,' said my mother, "'I'd go and look for one. I will,' said the red cow joyously. "'I will indeed.' Mary Poppins paused. "'That, I suppose, is why she was walking down Cherry Tree Lane,' Jane, promptly, Jane prompted gently. "'Yes,' whispered Michael. "'She was looking for her star.' Mary Poppins sat up with a little start. The instant of the intent look had gone from her eyes and the stillness from her body. "'Come down from that window at once, sir,' she said crossly. "'I am going to turn on the lights.' and she hurried across the landing to the electric light switch. Michael, said Jane in a careful whisper, just have one look and see if the cow's still there. Hurriedly, Michael peered through the gathering dusk. Mm, quickly, said Jane, Mary Poppins will be back in one minute. Can you see her? No, said Michael, staring out. Not a sign of her. She's gone. I do hope she finds it, said Jane, thinking of the red cow roaming through the world, looking for a star to stick on her horn. So do I, said Michael, as, at the sound of Mary Poppins' returning footsteps, he hurriedly pulled down the blind. And that's the end of chapter five.